Hey guys, it is Julie here with JT Wealth. In today's video, I'm going to discuss Lordstown, DPHC, and if this spec has the endurance to shoot to the moon or if it is all smoke and mirrors. So let's get into it. All right, welcome back everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. As always, just a reminder that if you like the video, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel as it really helps us grow and reach new viewers. Also be sure to check out some of the links down below in the description. I have a link to my awesome Patreon group there and the Discord chat has really been growing and everyone's been so amazing with sharing their ideas on different stocks that they're watching. We also have links for you can sign up for M1 Finance and Robinhood and get some great bonuses there too. Okay, so I know I've done videos on Lordstown and DPHC or Diamond Peak Holdings Corp in the past as I know this SPAC is highly anticipated and brings a lot of excitement along with it. Now, I don't want to restate every single thing about who Lordstown is and what it is that they're creating. So if you want a bit deeper dive into who they are as a company, please make sure to check out some of my previous videos, but I will state some of the basics here just to feed into this topic for today. And let me just also say this, I see a lot of potential with Lordstown, but I do always try to give you the most unbiased reporting that I can. So when I say that the intro and the title there are not clickbait, I do really mean it. My thoughts on Lordstown Motors do not necessarily line up with my thoughts on Diamond Peak Holdings. So if you stick around, you're gonna hear some information on DPHC and their CEO that could potentially make you a bit nervous as an investor. So just stay with me here as we work through all of this information. And this is also a good time for my legal disclaimer that I am not a financial advisor. This information is just coming from my own research and different articles that I've read and should in no way be taken as financial advice. Okay, so let's start off with the good stuff first. As of this morning, DPHC, who is the SPAC company hoping to take Lordstown Motors public via a reverse merger, is trading at $28, which is up 176% since July 31st when the company was trading closer to $10. The founder and CEO of Lordstown Motors is a name you may recognize from his time at Workhorse, and that is Mr. Steve Burns. After resigning from Workhorse and the acquisition of the Lordstown plant from GM in November of 2019, and with the intellectual property rights to produce the electric pickup truck, the Endurance, Burns began the full-fledged endeavor to turn Lordstown Motors into the next great EV truck company. And with the technology and the facilities to do so successfully, all he needed was the funding. With GM backing in the way of a $75 million investment, $25 million in cash, plus another 50 million as far as plant parts and permits, as well as GM taking a seat on the board of directors, Lordstown looks poised well to begin the production ASAP. With 27,000 pre-orders for their endurance pickup truck at a price tag of 52,500 a piece, we have pre-orders of about $1.4 billion. That amount of pre-orders is also equal to the amount of cars that Tesla sold in all of 2015. Then the final touch was the announcement of the SPAC reverse merger with Diamond Peak Holdings and the valuation of this newly merged company that's going to trade under the ticker ride at $1.6 billion. This announcement caused the August price of DPHC to rise 63.9%. So Lordstown and DPHC appear to be off to a great start. This of course is at a time where oil demand is dropping and the future of the automotive industry is expected to be at 40% EV by the year 2030, according to a report from oilprice.com. One report titled, A Rising Tide Lifts All Ships, summarizes the EV industry perfectly. At a time when Tesla is skyrocketing, conducting stock splits, and breaking valuation expectations at every turn, it is no wonder that so many people are so excited to jump into this hot sector. 
With this reverse merger expected to close by the fourth quarter of 2020, Steve Burns and his company Lordstown are expecting to get $675 million in funding. Now this is more than the $450 million that Burns said it would be expected to take to get the Endurance pickup truck into production by mid-2021. With both pickup truck and electric vehicle sales trending upward in the US, Lordstown Motors believes it can generate $118 million in revenue next year and $1.7 billion in revenue in its first full year of sales in 2022. It expects to be able to make about 31,000 trucks in 2022, with production more or less doubling each year after that. The startup also says there is potential to enter the SUV market over time. But now on to the bad. And this is the part that nobody seems to be talking about because with all of that said, it seems that the future of Lordstown Motors is very bright indeed. But what is there to say about Diamond Peak Holdings? Is anyone considering some of the agendas or motives behind these SPAC companies when they're going into such huge endeavors? And who exactly runs Diamond Peak Holdings and what is their history? If you're going to invest in a company, I would say that 99% of us would look at that company's history as part of making our decision whether to invest with them. So let's take a look at the history of DPHC and its leadership. Diamond Peak Holdings Company is led by its chairman and CEO, David Hamamoto. It should come as no shock to you that the CEO of a blank check company, so to speak, is massively wealthy. In a Jalopnik article put out on August 26th, Peter Hughes wrote that in 2012, he sold his 5,000 square foot Fifth Avenue apartment for a nice $50 million. And a quick Google search shows that in 2017, Hamamoto was listed number nine in the top 10 highest paid CEOs for that year, pulling in $60.3 million for his role in his asset management company, Northstar Realty Finance. But it is that company and the merger that it underwent that I really want to bring to your attention. Hamamoto arranged a merger with fellow mogul Thomas Barrick to bring his Northstar Real Estate Company and Barrick's Colony Capital together as one conglomerate company called Colony North Star. The merger in 2017 was designed to create one giant real estate investment trust with a value of over $9 billion. Now fast forward to 2018 and the share value of the new company had plummeted 60% and their market cap was now only $3.4 billion. Hamamoto's partner, Thomas Barrick, had his net worth cut in half by this from 400 million to less than 200. So why did this deal occur and what happened that caused it to go south so quickly? So as you can see in this Forbes article, for Hamamoto, the deal was a solution to a problem. Hamamoto had been under attack by activist hedge fund manager, Jonathan Litt. A few years earlier, Hamamoto had pushed Northstar Realty Finance, which bought and owned properties like hotels and nursing homes, to spin out the manager of those assets, Northstar Asset Manager, into a separate public company. Litt argued that this externally managed REIT structure, which real estate assets were overseen by outside managers who earn juicy fees, meant the managers were not always working with shareholders like him in mind. Hamamoto was a juicy target, having earned some $126 million in total compensation, 48 million of it in cash between 2014 and 2016. But the stocks of the two North Star companies had been performing poorly as separate entities. Hamamoto blamed the stock underperformance on Wall Street's fickleness, but together with his board decided his best course was to put North Star up for sale. The deal with Barracks Colony, which was an internally managed REIT, was the best Hamamoto could drum up. When Barrick announced Colony's merger with the two North Star companies in June of 2016, he called it a dynastic moment. He said the deal elevated the group to the highest echelon of real estate equity REITs and arms us with an infinite life balance sheet of almost $17 billion. The slideshow presentation for the merger boasted that Colony North Star was the fifth largest independent real estate manager and placed the company in the same league as giants like Blackstone and Brookfield. It wasn't long, however, before the bad news started to roll in. The original merger plan called for Hamamoto to stay on as executive vice chairman for at least a year, working with Barrick, who was executive chairman. 
In November of 2017, Hamamoto resigned from Colony North Star. Then in December of 2017, the SEC filings revealed that Hamamoto had been selling large amounts of his Colony North Star shares at prices as high as $12 each, collecting a total of $27 million. So after completing this merger, Hamamoto did not fulfill his end of the agreement, leaving before that one year was up and silently selling off his shares during peak pricing to a tune of $27 million. So I am left with a burning question, and that is, is Hamamoto and as such DPHC just really great at finding successful mergers to hype up and drive that stock price up only to increase their own net worth and then take off with those profits? Or does this history serve as an outlier in an otherwise savvy career? Who will end up being the ultimate beneficiary of this merger? Will it be Lordstown, their long-term investors, and the people of Ohio who are eagerly awaiting some of those jobs? Or will it be David Hamamoto and his blank check company's pipe investors? With a company whose stock price is already up 176% and is expected to continue to rise leading up to this merger at the end of Q4 2020, will that urge to take profit and sell out be too strong for Hamamoto? And if so, what does that mean for the future of Lordstown Motors? 2020 has been the year of the SPACs and so many have seen these amazing stock price spikes in a short period of time. So it doesn't take Wall Street or an MBA to realize that this creates a prime opportunity for people looking to get in in public offerings such as these. But is the opportunity too good to be true? Is the hype surrounding the EV market carrying so much weight that in conjunction with a booming SPAC market, it's creating its own bubble territory? Everyone can agree that there is a lot of money to be made here, but is that money for the company, for a day trader, or for a long-term investor? Or is it all just smoke and mirrors to continue to get millions of dollars pouring into these yet unproven companies, possibly on the coattails of these proven companies like Tesla? Like I said at the beginning, I think Lordstown has an amazing opportunity to produce these endurance pickup trucks, and both they and Workhorse, hopefully, will continue to make a lot of money as they go into the future of the EV market. But I just really wanted to make sure that I presented both sides of this as far as that past event goes, as the past does have a tendency to repeat itself, although it certainly does not have to. Hopefully this all turns out great for Lordstown, but be smart and do your due diligence and only invest where you personally see value. Again, I am not a financial advisor, but please guys, you know I always love hearing from you, so leave a comment down below. What do you think about this and Lordstown and Diamond Peak Holdings in general? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, please make sure that you are subscribed and give us a big thumbs up. I hope you have an awesome day and cheers.